Hey everyone, and welcome to the St. Philip's Christian College Easter service. It is great to be with you tonight, and I'm so glad that you could join us. Although we're not all together, uh, it is so good as a community to be sort of together in this way. And last year we didn't get to have a service for, you know, obvious reasons. And this year we're excited to be back together. And, and tonight we're going to have uh, some, some worship, some great testimonies. We're going to hear from a range of different students. You're going to be blessed with some amazing music as well and, and a great message. And, and I really pray that through this service that you have a greater understanding of what Easter is all about. This is such an important time for us. And as Christians who follow Jesus, this is a really key moment in remembering his sacrifice and his love for us. So... Tonight, I really pray that you can take it all in and enjoy the experience, whatever's happening. You might be sitting in the comfort of your lounge room with your family. You might be watching this alone. Wherever you are, I pray that this blesses you. So I'm wondering, what does Easter mean to you? Why don't you uh, turn to someone near you and let them know, what does Easter mean to you? Was it chocolate? I'm like, no shame, because chocolate is pretty good. It could have been family time. It could be celebrating Jesus. There, there's so much. And so we, uh, we went out into the playground and we thought we'd ask some of our students, what does Easter mean to them? Let's have a look. Okay, um, Easter means getting uh, chocolate from the Easter Bunny. Yeah. Um, the chocolate, um, holidays. <laughs> uh, Easter means like lots of chocolate. Easter's a really fun, a really fun type of year. I mean, once, once I came home from a holiday and there were Easter eggs everywhere. It was amazing. We got up in Melbourne, Easter morning. The, me the Easter bunny is a special man. It's guy, whatever, girl, special. Chocolate. I'll say something. And spending time with your family. And friends. Yeah. And that, that's important. I like about Easter, the eggs and the time we get to celebrate the death of Jesus and our sins being forgiven. I love Easter because you get to spend time with your family and it's a holiday and all the Easter eggs and chocolate. My favourite thing about Easter is the Easter egg hunting. It means to me like we also have a lot of fun and we have just a great time celebrating Jesus that he actually died on the cross for us, for our sins. Well, it means that where you can spend some time with your family, but the most important thing it means to me is about Jesus dying on the cross for us and that he saved our sins. Or that Easter can always come after Christmas, but Sometimes it cut, and my birthday's nearly after Christmas. Really? Yeah, it actually is up nearly after Christmas. That's awesome. And I get to go on school holidays at Easter. To me, it's a time when I remember that Jesus died for me, and he died for everyone I know. He died for their sins so that they can trust in him. So for me, it's a time of great remembrance, time of great joy, and uh, I can't wait for it this year. How good was that? I always love hearing from our students. They have such great perspective on life, don't they? We we're about to head into a time of worship, and this might be something that's totally normal to you or completely foreign. And we've got some students who are going to sing, and the song is beautiful, and singing about the love of Jesus. And, and I encourage you now in this time, you might want to sit and just take the words in or sing along. That's up to you. But reflect on what's being sung and what that really means. And as we head into that time, I'm just going to pray for us. So would you join with me as I pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you for Jesus and for your sacrifice and that we get to remember that at Easter. We pray that as we come into this time of worship and hearing from your word, Lord, would you speak to us? Lord, would this message become real for each one of us? And may we become more aware of your presence here with us now. In Jesus' name, amen. In the grove 
When your cup seemed too much With the worst yet to come I was on your mind On the cross As the crowds cursed your name Heaven's eyes turned away Still you thought of me I know you love me so Through it all you were thinking of me even death couldn't keep all your love from me. You died so that I could have a life. There's no greater love than this. I know you love.
What is your earliest memory of God or church? Um, this is, I hated going to church as like a little person. <laughs> I just like, I got forced to go. Um, and every single week I would cry in our crèche, but um, definitely grown from that. Um, so I no longer cry when I go to church, which is good. <laughs> but like, I think it's positive, so that's my earliest memory. I think um, not growing up in like a Christian family wasn't like a tradition to go to church very often. So my earliest memory of like God and church was definitely through some of my best mates, just like going to church with him and his family after like staying at his house on a Saturday night. And then his mum be like, oh, we're going to church. And I was like, yeah, I love church. It was like little Sunday school and we'd just muck around the whole time. It was so much fun. Describe a moment or experience where Jesus became real to you. Probably like Hillsong Conference like two years ago. Like um, in the worship, um, was like 20,000 people. That was pretty hectic. Um, and like everyone was just like pouring their hearts out to God. And it was just really eye-opening, like so many people. Yeah, I feel like my, like, most significant moment was like one of my first encounters where it wasn't at church or anything and I thought it was weird because it wasn't at church it was like in my lounge room and I remember like I think it was my mum praying for me and then I, that was like when I actually felt like emotional and I was like oh this is different like I was like six years old so like in kindergarten and I think yeah that was a real turning point for me where I was like oh this, this stuff's real. Why is Easter important to you? I think like growing up it was just like a fun day to eat chocolate so it never really had that much importance. But really the past like few years, when you actually think about like what Easter is, it's not just a place where you can just like, a time of year where you just eat chocolate. It's actually about how um, like the only reason we're able to have like such a great salvation is because Jesus, Jesus died on the cross for us. And um, remembering that Easter and the egg actually representing that tomb that Jesus was in, like that's why it's hollow. Yeah, so I think that it's so important to know that just have your foundation in Jesus and um, how he has died for us, so yeah. And just reflecting on such a big sacrifice, like I don't think like, you completely understand the significance of someone dying for someone else. Like, I, I, like watching movies, when you see someone die for someone else, you're like, oh. so I think it's so significant and sometimes we can take it for granted. So I think Easter's good in just reminding us of like, mm. yeah. It's like, how loved am I? And like, yeah, how yeah, loved are definitely. all of we? It's yeah. like a great reminder, because I think we can all have times where it's like questioning our worth and everything like that and not feeling loved, but actually reflecting and remembering that, hey, this person actually, Jesus actually loved me so much and God actually loves me so much that he sent his son to die mm. for, mm -hmm. for me and for my family and for my friends and for everyone in this world mm. um, so that we can live as new beings and live in his love. So I think that's just like, it's pretty crazy. And when I think about it, I think we can, well, I sometimes can think just be like, oh yeah, it's just Easter, like, but I think with a lot of self-reflection lately that I've actually realized that because I've grown up in this um, community of love, especially within my church and kids church and youth, I think because of that love, I have been able to be my true self um, and I, I'm like so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful that like God loves me and he like loves everyone. And I'm so grateful that um, I have been able to realize that and, <clears throat> and that has been shown throughout everything in my life with like the community that I'm living in and everything like that. So yeah. Yeah, definitely 100%. G'day, I'm Caleb, I am in year 12. I'm student vice captain and I'm here to talk a little about my journey with faith. So I grew up in a Christian home, a Christian mum and Christian dad and two other brothers, an older and a twin. But um, yeah, it's, I kind of had it all growing up. My parents were great and loving and I haven't had the best relationship with my brothers all the way through, but they're all right and I'd, yeah, I'd fight for them, that sort of thing. But um, something I quickly came to learn when I was about year six, year seven age is that just because you grew up in a Christian home doesn't mean that your life's going to be easy. So for me, my brother went through a really tough time and had a whole plethora of issues that stemmed from that, which made it really hard for us as a family to live with him 
and to be in the same room with him. And that was really hard. And for me, God has been a source of comfort in that. I'd pray and I'd go, God, I need help. And he was there. And times where I've gone, I don't see how this could possibly be going to work in a positive way. And then the next day, God will drop a reminder and I'll be like, you know what? I'm still here. So yeah, my eldest brother, I love him to pieces. His name's Jonah. A family friend of mine recently from Vanuatu was around at our place and we explained to them, they were like, where's Jonah? Where's Jonah? We haven't seen Jonah. And we explained, he's in a hard spot right now. He's, um, he's kind of running away from his faith. And they just laughed. And we we're sitting there and we're like, what, why are you laughing at this? It's, it's not funny. And they're like, his name's Jonah. He's going to come back to God. And I have complete faith in that because I've seen that. I've seen Jonah coming back and he's, he's faced his whales. There's been things that have swallowed him up and nearly eaten him whole, and that's been terrible to watch. But for me, I draw so much strength from the fact that I've seen God working in his life and bringing him back and restoring the brother that I thought I'd lost. When he had all this pain and this hurt that he'd been harboring, he was like a wounded animal and he didn't know what to do. So he ended up just flinging it out to me and my family to deal with. And that was hard and I'd try and love him and then he'd go and he'd break my heart again or he'd break my trust. And I found myself battling with the question that, you know what, how do I love my brother? I, I don't even know if he loves me, but how do I love him if he's just constantly breaking my heart and wearing me down? And I came to the conclusion that I can love my brother because God died for him, just as God died for me. And that feeling God's love in my life, having encountered his presence, is like nothing else. It's like... You feel yourself physically fill and charge and it's like a bucket and you just reach all of it. And when your bucket is overflowing, that's when you find it the easiest to give love to others. And so I've found that by drawing my strength from God's love, I can actually show that love to my brother. And I've seen that working out in good ways. I've seen him come on this redemptive path where, you know what, he's starting to recognise that... The things he's chasing after to try and relieve his pain are just really digging a deeper hole and he started walking out of that. And he might not believe in God yet. Like, you know, I, I reckon he does believe in God and he might not see this path as guided by God. But as a Christian, as someone who's felt God's love, I know that despite what we think and despite what we want to believe, God is working and God will bring us out of those ditches. Good evening to the St Philip's Christian College community. It's my absolute joy and privilege tonight to share with you a little bit of a message of hope really around, around Jesus Christ and, and how he really is a special person in my life and how he can also be a special person in your life. At the time of Easter, I always think about what's important to me in my life and I think about my family, I think about Easter eggs and how much I love chocolate. And I also reflect and think about this special moment four years ago where I had the chance to run the London Marathon. What an absolutely incredible experience that was, one of life's highlights for me. And while I was running the marathon, it really made me think about what I'm thirsty for. You know, running the 42.2 kilometre distance, what I would usually thirst for, which would be like maybe a, a soft drink or a milkshake. While running a marathon, that is the last thing I was in need of. What I was really thirsty for was water. And that was my real desire. And it got me thinking then about life at the moment and, and what we actually really desire and what we need. And, and sometimes I feel like in my life at least, I, I fall into this trap of desiring like a new house or a better car. And, and really those things never actually truly satisfy the thirst in my life for my desires to be met. And you know, at this time at Easter, maybe you are going through a very similar time. You, you may be desiring some amazing Easter eggs from your parents or, or for the parents, maybe you're desiring a new car or a better house. And, and, and it really led me to think about what Jesus said about being thirsty and what we desire and what we need. And, and you see in John 7, 37 to 38, Jesus says this at a feast. He says, on the last day, 
And the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let them come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has laid out, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. You see, at this Easter time, do we have rivers of living water flowing out of our life at the moment? Even me as a Christian, at times, do I always have these rivers of living water or I'm desiring things of this world? And it's this tension that I'm at. And I just want to encourage you at this Easter time to really reflect upon what are the desires and the needs in your life? And are they being met at this time by Jesus? You see, Jesus died on the cross so that we could have eternal life and freedom in that. And I want you to really think about in your life personally. Imagine at this Easter time, if you had your true desires and needs met through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, what a difference it would make in your next week, in your next two weeks. The next time you thirst after a drink of water or the next time you thirst after a great Easter egg at this Easter time, have a think about, is this really a thirst that's going to satisfy my desires? And I hope that that will stir you to think about your, your desires and your needs being met by Jesus at this time and how special that would be. And then imagine our whole St Philip's Christian College community being impacted by everyone's needs being met by Jesus at this time and, and the harmony and the compassion and the love and joy we'd have for one another. And may at this Easter time, it be a time where you and your family and your friends have a great time together, but also know that Jesus loves you and that he is there for your desires to be met. I'm just going to pray as we conclude this. Lord, we just thank you so much for this school community. We thank you for the amazing staff, the students and the parents that, that make up St Philip's Christian College community. At this time during Easter, God, I ask that, that you would be the ultimate need provider for everyone in their life. Lord God, for those that are going through great times, that, that there would be a Thomas celebration. For those that are going through times of difficulty, God, I ask that you would be there to provide them comfort and support. And Lord, we just ask that you would be glorified and honoured in everything we do. In your name we ask this. Amen. Well, have a great time with your family and be blessed and know that we here at St Philip's Christian College love, believe and value you. Lord, you know me Every thought See me in the dark when I'm alone with my silent prayers. Ooh, and still you love me. Ooh, Lord, your mercy makes me see.
Wasn't that amazing? I want to say thank you to our college choir for that beautiful rendition of a song that was written by our own director of music, Mrs. Lindy Connett. Thank you so much for bringing it to us in such a beautiful way and for honouring God for, by the way that you sang it and presented it to us today. I also want to thank Caleb Smith and Luke O'Day who produced the video that accompanied the singing of that beautiful song. Congratulations and thank you so much. As we conclude our Easter service, I want to say thank you to everyone for joining us today. It's such an important occasion when we remember Christ and what he did for us by dying on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven and then rising from the dead on Sunday when we celebrate life, not just life for now, but life forever. I'm so grateful for that personally, but I'm sure you are too for you and all of your family. And that's why we celebrate this occasion together. And I wanna thank you for joining us and being a part of this very significant time. As you go into the Easter season, I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray a blessing over you and over your family. And I invite you to join with me as I pray. Dear God, our Father, I thank you so much for every family in our community, for every person who is a part of St Philip's Christian College at Newcastle. And as they go into this Easter season and into the holiday break, I want to pray protection over every person, that they will be safe, they will have a time of rest and refreshment. And I want to pray a blessing over each of them, Lord. I pray that you will bless them and take care of them, that you'll be kind and gracious to them, and you'll look on them with your favour and give them your peace. I pray in the name of God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Easter. All of our students have a great holiday and we'll see you again in term two. God bless you. <laughs>